This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Conan Exiles video. Today, we are taking a look at a new letter from the producer. Let's get to it. So I know you guys are looking at the date that's on the screen right now and you're like, December 18th, FireSpark, what have you been doing? You're slacking. Well, I wasn't here to cover this, so I'm covering it now. I'm sorry it's a little late. Things happen. Life happens. Holidays happen. Anyway, let's take a look at what this is all about. So, hello, Exiles. I wanted to catch everyone up on what the team has been working on since the Isle of Sipta Early Access launch and give a preview of what's coming to Conan Exiles in early 2021. First things first, let's chat Isle of Sipta. We released in Early Access on September 15th and since then we have been releasing small updates to fix bugs, adjust balance, and address some of the feedback we have received. We have also been reading the reviews players have posted on Steam, our forums, and social media. When we released Isle of Sipta, we knew that we were making some risky decisions and tweaking some of the core aspects of Conan Exiles that people have come to love and embrace over the past four years. Some of the features with Isle of Sipta have been well received and some of them have not. I don't know what, what features have been well received. As far as I know, everybody pretty much hated Sipta. So let me know down there in the comments what has been well received because I don't think any part of SIPTA other than um, the lighting maybe has been well received. Anyway, below you will see two charts that attempt to categorize the most common comments we have seen on reviews. And then it has like the review breakdown. So we have the map, bugs, miscellaneous, storm, thralls, vaults, and the 2.1 patch. So you can see like the biggest chunks here have been bugs, storm, and thralls. Conan Exiles is a sandbox game where the players can decide how they want to play. We also have different server types which allow very different communities to play and experience the game the way that they like the most. On top of this, we allow mods which can take the game to amazing new directions that we never expected. The result is that we end up having a lot of different core user types that expect and want different things. We expect any change to potentially upset some users in various groups, but it is obvious that we have missed the mark with too many of our customers with Isle of Sipta. This is something we plan to address. One of the main purposes of having an early access period is precisely so we can receive feedback from the community and tweak and improve our game as we move towards full launch. And we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this here after we're done getting through this letter because keep in mind stick around because there's something important about this comment specifically that we're going to cover here in a minute. So then we're going to get into the changes that they're making to Isle of Sipta. They're essentially gutting Sipta and making it more like the Exile Lands. Some of the negative feedback we received during early access was that Isle of Sipta seemed emptier than the Exile Lands lacking NPC camps, for example. That there were too few good places to build, that the storm was too dominating, that the map itself seemed too small, that there was not enough PvE content, that you couldn't transfer characters between maps, and that it was too cumbersome to capture thralls. Now, I want to I talk about something here a second with all this before we continue on. This is something that just playing the map, if you just play the map, this this stuff here that they that they just said that they received feedback on is painfully obvious. I don't understand how you could play test SIPTA and the core loop that they had and not come to any of these conclusions. Like maybe the building places, because this is subjective. Like I thought there was plenty of good building places on SIPTA, provided you didn't have the storm going on because their storm was definitely dominating. But that's the thing. Like you could see that the storm was dominating and then realize that it's stopping you from building in a lot of those cool building spots. But once again, building places is subjective whether you think it's you know a place is good to build or not in in most m most cases as far as the seeming emptier and lacking the npc camps 
like once again this this is just something lacking not enough pve content um all of this is due to the core game loop itself that they came up with and i don't understand how you can play test like even doing something like like i normally do where i just jump in admin mode test things out do this do that you can see these things exist you can see these problems exist if you've played the game if you've sat down and played the game and you have a good connection with your community you can immediately see these issues i knew these things were going to all be a problem with SIPTA the first time I got my hands on SIPTA. It did not take very long at all for me to realize this is going to be a problem. So I don't understand how they say they play test the game or they have a QA department, but none of this was brought up. Was this stuff brought up and then shot down due to the developers thinking that their system was good and not agreeing with QA? or their testers? Did they not test it themselves? I think this here is a sign of a much larger problem within Funcom and their game development themselves that they really need to address. All right, let's continue on. Going forward, we will improve the Isle of SIPTA expansion significantly in all these aspects by introducing many new NPC camps around the map, populating the camps with humans who can be captured as thralls, expanding the island map to the south with new content in desirable building locations, tone down the intensity of the storm and make it possible to build within the storm area, break the links between the vaults, the storm and the surge, introduce new purges with enemies from the island, introduce new activities and new PvE mechanics, make new and unique placeables for the island of Sipta. Like this, what, what is this? This wasn't new and unique placeables for the Isle of Sipta. That doesn't even have anything to do, like it's great that they're adding that, but that doesn't even have anything to do with anything that they just talked about. They're just like, hey, let's just throw this in here. This is something else. They add this in to kind of dilute everything else that's going on to make it feel like they're doing more for the map than what they're doing. Now, I'm not saying they're not doing a lot. They're doing a lot. They're gutting the map and refactoring it. Um, so they are, but this just like, why would you put the, okay, great. New placeables. You guys have been added. They've been adding placeables. They keep adding placeables and, and stuff like that. That's nothing that's to be expected. Now this one, this one's interesting. Introducing a new religion and a new avatar. Now that's big, but also how does this going to affect all of the problems that were stated above this doesn't affect that's just something new that they're adding to to build hype they put this in here they put this in here to help build hype about the changes that are coming but these these two things here don't have anything to do with any of this up here open a new chamber in the tower of sipta with great rewards to be found inside now is it, is it actually going to be great rewards or is it just going to be more of the same stuff that we're finding in vaults, a lot of just random resources, maybe some Eldarium, or is there actually going to be like unique, awesome, strong weapons or strong armor that we're going to find in there? That's something I can't wait to find out. Allow character transfers between the Exile Lands and Isle of Sipta. Like right from the get-go, I don't know how they thought making another map and not allowing transfers, not having the tech behind that, was going to be a good idea but that's a whole other video to itself so then we're going to take a look they break it down a little bit more npc camps full of life and activity greatly increase the richness of the world of conan exiles we will introduce many such camps to the isle of sipta these camps have a host of different human npcs which can be captured as thralls just like in the exiled lands the camps will vary in size and come from three different factions Stygian mercenaries have settled on the Isle of Sipta. They are eager to, eager to blah, 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 blah. Then you have the Black Corsair pirates. Then we have near the Black Tower in the middle of the island, a new and especially large camp has formed. Can those who dwell there be survivors of the devilish sorcery of the surges? The terrifying experience of being taken from their homes and dragged through the dark, blah, 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 blah. blah. So it's another faction that we we don't know about yet. And then we have vaults, storm, and surge changes. The Isle of Sipta expansion offered a new game loop consisting of three components, the vaults, the storm, and the surge. The intent was for you to complete vaults 
to gain sigils and Eldarium. Use the sigils to kill the monsters in the storm to harvest their essence, then finally use the Eldarium and the essence to summon a Surge for a chance to capture Thralls. We realize that many people find this process too cumbersome, you think? And we are responding to your feedback by breaking the features dependency on each other. Now, the thing is, is this never had to be cumbersome. The thing is, is the way they went about doing it is what makes it cumbersome. That loop itself didn't need to be an issue. Well, it was saved the capturing thralls. The, to make the surges the only way to capture thralls was a terrible idea, but they could have done other stuff with that, some of which they have an idea to do here and that they're doing now, but they didn't have to break that loop completely, and they could have made the grind for Eldarium a lot less by making a simple tweak of everything that's on the island has a chance to drop some, like, I don't know, call it Eldarium Essence. And then after you get so much of the essence, you can combine that together to make full crystal of Eldarium and then smelt that. That just helps break up that grind feel because while you're out doing anything, you're constantly getting a flow of Eldarium. And then they had the sigils for killing the monsters in the storm, but you didn't need the sigils to kill the monster in the storm. It was really easy to kill the monsters in the storm just by exploiting the AI. You could farm them and farm the essence. The other thing was is the amount of essence that it took to actually get decent surges to get those thralls. But once again, if you had other ways of getting thralls that were easier and you could get good thralls and you didn't use that as your thrall mechanic, then the loop would have been a much different situation. Vaults will all be rebalanced to be a level 60 dungeons, each with their own unique rewards. Vaults will still be the source of Eldarium on the island, and Eldarium will still be used to delve and craft new recipes. So that massive grind is still there. That, that was an issue because, once again, the grind for Eldarium was a pain in the butt. It did not feel good. Half the time you get through the vault, you get very little in the way of rewards, and it just did not feel rewarding. Most of Sipta's loop did not feel rewarding. Your risk versus reward was just completely off, and I'm hoping that they bump up the amount that you actually get to make the risk versus reward feel a little bit better in, in this new situation, but we're just going to have to wait and see. The storm will become less pervasive, allowing you to build within its area of effect without drawing the attention of the creatures of the storm. You may now hunt these horrors of the outer void for new and unique rewards and they won't be the only source of essence needed to power the surge. Well, that's good. I mean, but they could have just done that without destroying their, their entire original game loop to begin with. Everything on the island, once again, could have just dropped the essence or the essence that they do drop that you could use for the surges could have been combined to make Eldarium through some type of magic. I mean, there's a lot of different things. There's Don't, don't th sit here and think that the suggestions that I make are the only way to solve the issues that Sipta had because there's a ton, an absolute ton, and a lot of the community has come up with suggestions, tons of suggestions and things they could have done to just make that grind feel a lot less. The surge will largely remain the same as it is now, but the rewards will be changed. Completing a surge may reward you with a fragment of power. These fragments can be used inside a chamber in the Tower of Sipta for new and great rewards. The surge will no longer be the only source of thralls on the island with the introduction of the many NPC camps. You can use the fragments of power for the rewards that you get from going through this tower, but this... this I feel like a lot of these changes here that are being made to Sipta. Now, this could be me jumping the gun, and I hope they heed my warning here. I feel like this isn't going to do anything to remove that terrible grind feeling because you're still going through multiple steps to do one thing that still continues to feel grindy because the rewards aren't worth the time and effort and risk that you put in to, to get said reward. Okay, so you get a fragment of power. You can. You're not, you, you may. You're not necessarily guaranteed to get a fragment of power. You may get a fragment of power. Okay, so you can use the fragment of power. So you have to grind for the surge. You gotta grind that essence. 
to be able, and, and there's going to be other ways apparently to get essence now. That's fine. You got to grind for it regardless to be able to do the surge. You may get a fragment of power. You should always get a fragment of power. Should be based on the level. Once you hit a specific level, let's say second tier surge and up, you should be guaranteed. It should be, well, let's say 50% chance for second tier. And then the, past that, it just goes up 7,500, whatever. You get the idea. You should, this on a max tier surge should be guaranteed. The rewards that you have to go through, because then you have to go into the tower, which is most likely going to be a dungeon. So then you have to go through all that to get to the chamber to then get the rewards from there. This better be something amazing. This needs to be something amazing. This needs to be something worth going in there for. I'm talking buttloads of Eldarium, um, just something big because it's it's a situation where it felt grindy before because you do the you needed the Eldarium to delve and delving is a complete RNG nightmare. So you had to go through vault after vault after vault after vault after vault just to get enough to hopefully get the item that you're trying to delve for. So this, this should guarantee that you're going to have enough Eldarium if you if, if that's one of the rewards to, to get at least two or three things from the delving bench, something like that. Like it needs to be rewarding. That's, I mean, I don't know how else to put it. It needs to be rewarding. New lands, purges, new religion, and much more. We are expanding the size of the Isle of Sipta to the south. And with these new lands, the overland map size of the Isle of Sipta will be over 90% that of the exile lands. So that's confusing the way that's that's written. Um, basically, it's saying it's going to be about 90. That's going to bring Sipta up to about 90% of the size of the exile lands. That's it. So it's going to be close to the same size. This area will be divided into three different biomes with the ashlands, the floodlands, and the savanna. There will be many desirable base building locations in these lands, plus new NPC cities from two new races. Several new mysterious black pools can be found in one of these cities and they will be linked to an all new PVE mechanic, allowing you to test your metal in brutal fights against monstrous opponents. Now this, this is interesting. I'm always for new PVE stuff. We are also planning several new activities, which encourage exploration of the Isle of Sipta and the opportunity to free human NPCs from camps, making them your followers. That's cool. That's a, another way to get thralls without having to knock them out. That's fantastic. That's a really cool feature. And that's, th that is awesome because that's what I'm talking about, about ways that are rewarding things to do that are repetitive to keep you playing that are reward. That's rewarding. You're going to want to go free these guys. They're going to get captured. You're like, let's go do this dungeon and get some, because you never know what's going to be in there. I'm sure it'll be a random grab bag, but if you go in there and you're getting I don't know, let's say five, six brawls just from doing a dungeon and you just walk out, you free them and they go back to your base or they wait for you at the entrance or something like that. That's freaking awesome. That's fantastic. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't know if it's going to be they'll just stand there and then you have to run them back one by one or how they'll go about doing that. But I think the ability to go in there and they should, they should make sure it's like, it shouldn't be you go in there and you get one or two, you free one or two or you free one. No, it should be a situation where you free a bunch and they want to join your city. They want to join you. They're, they're willing to follow you because you rescued them and they have no place else to go. That helps with the role play. It helps. It's just fun. It's awesome. That would be absolutely fantastic. All right, I'm going to stop rambling. But anyway, a new religion with its own unique weapons, tools, priest outfit, blah, blah. It's a new religion. Its avatar is a horrific monster like no other. I, I mean, have you seen Yogg? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> sure to give those your blah, 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 faint of heart, bunch of blah, blah, blah lore. Um, Yeah, new religion, new monster uh, to... to Praise your allegiance to. In addition, purges, like those that can be found on the exiled lands, where large groups of enemies attack your base, are coming to the Isle of Sipta. The area you build will be, I mean, it's going to work the same. The area you build uh, will determine what you get. 
Sometimes you're going to get some of the creatures from the vaults. I guess if you build too close to a vault, storm monsters, human NPCs, all of that. A new mechanic will be introduced to these purges, allowing you to use resources to either prevent or provoke the purge. That's cool. That's awesome. That's the kind of outside the box thinking that the game needs. We need more of this kind of stuff. We need more of this. This here, that's awesome, and stuff like this here, if done right. Both of these, if done right, I think can be absolutely fantastic additions to the game and something that will make me say, go pick up Sipta. And finally, we know that many of you have been asking for a way to transfer your character between the Exile Lands and the Isle of Sipta. We are happy to say that we are working on letting you do so. A character transfer system will be introduced during Isle of Sipta Early Access to allow you to use your favorite character on the map you choose to play on. Yes. That should have been right from the get-go. We would also like to thank everyone for their continued support and for all the early access feedback, helping us improve the Isle of Sipta expansion. We wish everyone who celebrates happy holidays and a happy new year. And then that's it. Now, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about something that was said on Twitter that I mentioned up here that we need to talk about. On Twitter, Jade plays games. Many of you know Jade. I've mentioned him plenty of times on the channel. He's right there with me when it comes to calling out developers on whatever, whether it be good stuff, BS, what have you. He said, good stuff, but console fans rip. The content drought will continue well into 2021. Be lucky if SIPTA makes it to consoles by summer. To which Iggy replied, now for those of you who don't know, Iggy is works for Funcom. He's one of their community people. Said, full launch, PC and consoles still scheduled for early 2021. And Jade replies, we shall see. These are pretty big additions with work to be done on Xbox issues still and parody updates. I'll still stick with a summer, but hope I'm wrong. To which Iggy replies, work on it started a while ago with an explanation mark. That's why we can show some of the results in the post. The new biomes slash land expansion will come after full launch since it requires some substantial work. So right there, he's saying, now remember, this is a Funcom employee saying that Sipta is going to launch and not be done. It's going to be out of early access. It's going to launch, full launch, incomplete. Okay, so then Jade follows up with, so we will be playing for an experience without the full content, but not at a cheaper price. I hate to rag, but this isn't making me more confident in the DLC. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. So the Sipta map as it stands will be what consoles get at first with updates after. To which Iggy replies, they'll be getting the same as PC. All the content listed in the announcement will come to consoles as well. Some of it post launch, all platforms. Once out of early access, parity between platforms will resume. And then he says post, which he's talking about the post that we're referring to here, the one that I just talked to you about. Post is sort of a roadmap. Other than that, just wait and see. So this post here, all of this is just a roadmap. They're obviously working on some of it. Some of it's done, but SIPTA is going to launch with some, but not all of these features. Definitely not the additional land masses. It's going to launch incomplete and be sold for full price, apparently, maybe, maybe not. But I mean, they stated a long time ago that when it launches, the price is going to go up. So the price is going to go up, but they're still going to sell an incomplete product, but it's going to be early access. We need to put a stop, gamers, to this kind of behavior. This stuff just keeps happening and happening and happening and happening. And I'm absolutely sick of it. It's happened with Cyberpunk. It's happened with this. It's happened with tons of other games, games, DLCs, stuff just getting released. They're calling it done and it's not done. I know they have deadlines they have to meet. I'm sure they've got investors and, and, and CEOs breathing down their necks, cracking that whip, saying, get this done. You have to have it done by a certain period of time. Okay, but if it's not done, it's not done. 
it's not finished. You can't release it and say that it's released, that it's your 1.0, it's out of early access. If it's not freaking done, it's still early access. That's stupid. Then you're going to jack up the price. No, gamers, just say no. We got to stop this. This this has to stop. The more we buy into this crap, the more we're telling game companies, and I'm not just ragging Funcom. I'm not, because they're not the only ones to do this crap. But we got to we gotta put an end to this, because we just got to say no. The more we buy into this, the more that we're saying, just keep doing it. Just keep selling us incomplete stuff. Keep raising the price. We're fine with it. And we shouldn't be. If it's not done, they shouldn't bring it. It should not be out of early access until everything on this here that they say they want to add has been added and tested thoroughly. Then you release it. I know, I know that they're calling it a live service. That's fine. Live service gets tweaks, gets small updates, small fixes and changes. This is a complete overhaul to a DLC that was a failure. It should not be out of early access until this is completed, this is tested, because then what's next? What if this fails? Then they got it again? Well, it's still in freaking early access because you're never, you never completed it in the first place. It's not done now. It's still in early access. And they're basically saying with this letter that it's not done because they plan on refactoring the whole thing. We just got to say no, gamers. We got to, we got to band together and put a stop to this behavior. It's ridiculous. I'm going to wrap it up there. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Till next time, thanks for watching.